This journal, if it can be kept alive, is not meant merely for my own private remembrance. I dare to hope it may amuse the future also. A message in a bottle thrown overboard from this vast ship of ours that drifts. Today, the world feels nearer a breaking point than ever before in the 19 years since the Great War. 1938 is not a happy-looking new year. The present may seem a little less painful if one tries to see it already as so much history. The Nervous State is our dramatization of F.L. Lucas's Journal Under the Terror, 1938, by writer and director Nicola Baldwin. On the 31st of December, 1937, F.L. Lucas, known as Peter, undertook to keep a journal for one calendar year. So how did I first come across F.L. Lucas's Journal Under the Terror? Well, I'm already doing a research project on the emotional um, costs and the emotional impact of the international crisis in Britain. Um, and I was doing research on various figures and I just found mention uh, of the journal in someone's diaries. Uh, I went to find it and when it arrived on, on my doorstep and I started reading it, it was a revelation. This is exactly what I wanted. This text expressed exactly what I was suspecting about the way that this period, this, this period between the Munich crisis and the end of the phony war, so the summer of 1938 uh, and up till uh, the beginning of the war in earnest in, in May 1940. I first encountered Julie because years ago I read some of her writings about women who got involved in fascism when I was working on a play about far-right radicalization of young women. That play had a reading in London and that was back in 2019 and Julie came and joined the panel afterwards. The next day we had coffee and she, I think that was the first time she told me about this journal which she'd recently found. I wanted immediately to do more with this because his story was so compelling. Um, his personal story, but also um, his political activism, his engagement, um, his positionality um, was really something that had not been properly represented um, in so much of the historiography uh, of appeasement. I wanted to know where is Prudy in this in, the, in this journal? Um, where is the women's voice? And this is exactly what intrigued uh, Nicola as well. How could we find it? How could we inform it? How could we give it voice? The three characters in the play, um, simply put one of them, although she's called Gudrun, who is the main character of um, a play called The Lovers of Gudrun that they are both working on, Prudence and Peter, F.L. Lucas, in the course of that year. So Gudrun is the third character in her own right, but she's also the voice of what's going on in the world. So she reads the headlines, she interacts with Peter. The two real people in it is, is F.L. Lucas, known as Peter, who wrote the journal, and his wife, Prudence, who is only referenced in the journal as P after November when she's had a breakdown and he, and he, and he breaks the kind of surface of, of the journal being historical record to talk about that. We were very lucky to be able to apply for uh, the University of Sheffield's COVID recovery fund. And then we had a first rehearsal uh, with the actors who Nicola recruited at the end of April 2022. Another thing which I'm going to say is an iteration is the invasion of Ukraine. The emotional distress that Lucas feels and Prudence in our version, having travelled widely, it was, was very similar to, I think, how people have felt about Ukraine. I write to you the anguish of a lifelong admirer of English civilization when the news of betrayal of democracy arrived. Theatrically, the first iteration was June 2022, and it was a staged reading of the play at the Montgomery Theatre in Sheffield. And it was followed by a, a panel discussion uh, with a number of professionals who we wanted to help us think through the impact and the possibilities of the drama itself. What was most gratifying about the panel was that we had created a play, Nicola had written a play that spoke to people not about the past, but that spoke to them very much in the present, that helped them understand their own position in the world at that moment, that helped them process their own relationship to crisis, to trauma. Many of the panelists mentioned that what we should really acknowledge is that normality is not um, some moments of peace um, and, and, and tranquility and understanding. Normality is actually crisis. Uh, normality is actually not only crisis, but 
being ready to cope with crisis, being, you know, developing the tools, personal, political, um, individual and collective in how we actually, um, you know, survive uh, crises. I'm very interested in, in collaborations outside theatre and outside the arts and I've done a couple of those and the way that theatre can make things three-dimensional in a way that everybody is able to talk about things and irrespective of my fears about sending Prudy out into the world you know without maybe the theatrical grounding that that she might have compared to Peter Lucas I think it does do that I think it, it allows you to respond to the characters even if you don't know the history. So it, I think it makes that history accessible. We were fortunate to be asked to perform the Nerf Estate a second time. This was part of the Being Human Festival. It was a great opportunity to really kind of test uh, Nicola's play, to see its versatility. Uh, and one of the ways that we saw that beautifully was by using two or three uh, different actors this time around. Um, and each of the new actors, of course, reinterpreted the role beautifully and brought out different aspects of, of Peter and Prudence. So my name's Becky Simon, I'm an actor, uh, and I'm playing Prudy, who is F.L. Lucas's wife um, at the time when he's writing the journal. The, her storyline follows her kind of mental deterioration through the time just before the, the war and how all the global influences impacted on her personally um, and her mental health. And I play the sort of author of the book uh, character, the sort of, I guess he's a MacGuffin really, um, that's, that is the conduit through which the tale is told. But it's an interesting novel, obviously, that looks on, I guess, some mental health issues and various other things. And he was a, a journalist at the time of the Second World War, and I think he also served in the First World War, so he has that bridge in terms of his knowledge and his attitude to war, I guess, that informs um, who he is. Hi, I'm Sophie. I am an actress and I play Gudrun in The Nervous State, as well as all the bits of news that keep popping up around the play. You could do it as a traditional reading. You could just sit on stage and just read the text, or you can move around a little bit on stage. So I need to know at which parts of the text I'm going to stand, where, where am I looking, where's my focus, who of the other characters am I hearing and who am I not hearing, which is particularly interesting for my character because there's um, the character of Prudy, and for me, for my world, she doesn't exist, so I cannot hear her interactions. What was so special about being able to perform The Nervous State an additional time was to bring out new things from the play, to show the versatility of the play, the success of the play as a work of, of theatre. Uh, in fact, by having two of the three actors as new, new to the roles, um, we saw different things about the, the roles, different things about the play, different things that the actors brought to the characters that they were playing. And they evoked new sensations, new emotions, uh, different perspectives, the dramatization of different ideas. But it was such a privilege to see actors doing that um, and to see again the versatility, the brilliance of Lucas's words, uh, and then, of course, channeled through Nicola, the voice that she gave to Prudy by this different troupe. It's interesting to reflect on what you hope to achieve from any piece of work, but with this in particular, it's a slightly more complicated matter. Uh, when you write a piece for theatre, there is a, you, you want to entertain, you want to inform, you want to make me shock, you want to, but What's specific about this is the journal is written by a real person. And although he wrote it being aware it was for publication, he had no idea historically and personally what that year that he resolved to keep a journal of was going to deliver. Um, that it also covers the fact that his wife had a breakdown and these are real people. And then for that to become very closely allied to historical research and therefore potentially becoming a historical document, even though it's drama. And then also this third layer of being taught. The responsibility you feel for the voices in it is much stronger. I think if, if anything, that's one of the things that I am very watchful of and remain kind of very, very uh, aware of, more so than when you, you invent characters and send them out into the world. 
think the live feed helped um, yeah. helped um, me focus on different aspects of it. We could see the characters in front of you. But it's also as if, if you're looking at the live feed, it's as if they're talking to you. And I feel like that helps you connect to the character more, rather than them talking to you across the stage. It allows you to look into their eyes and see their real emotions. And I feel like that helped me understand the worsening of the mental health throughout the performance. So I really loved the way uh, the actors were captured on camera while they were enacting and we could see it on the screen gave a huge impact. I love the pictures, the stills that were going in between. It's, it's almost like a really intimate setting. Um, you really get like a window into how those people thought, but also felt as well. The emotion comes across. The idea of sort of the perma crisis that the, I think the play is sort of based on is I think it's very significant for how people are experiencing sort of the aftermath of COVID, how people experience war and how sort of I think the way people's mental health is impacted by sort of the political life of the country and what goes on around them in a way that I think is possibly not considered very often. Nicola Baldwin's play does more than stage Lucas's journal. It is the imaginative co-production and marriage of minds between playwright and historian. Indeed, what we have here is a writer writing about a writer and a historian writing about a writer who fancied himself a historian and a chronicler of his age. Nicola and I have connected with the descendants of the protagonists to know them in ways we could never have discovered from the printed page alone. We've done detective work online and in archives to fill in the gaps that Lucas left. Some of those gaps he left intentionally and others are there because writer and reader don't always think the same things are important. The Nervous State is an attempt to rethink and recast this rediscovered primary source in a way that we can hear it speak for its own age, but even more importantly, to hear it speak for our moment in history, in the midst of a crisis, and for those in crisis in our very moment in history. You know, we're a storytelling communal species, and the last few years with lockdown and pandemic and poverty and everything is getting harder and harder to have meaningful shared experiences so um, theatre has become more precious even as places like the old Elden Coliseum are going dark because of cuts and everything but the, the need to have a shared drama otherwise we're just fighting one another you know just finding drama between ourselves aren't we